Okay, focus on the breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out, and see if you can see something new in the way you relate to the breath. One of the reasons why we keep going over the breath again and again and again is so that we get sensitive to subtleties. If the breathing becomes mechanical, then it turns onto automatic pilot and the mind goes wandering someplace else and you end up not noticing much of anything at all. But there are subtleties going on right here, right now. Subtleties in the breath, subtleties in the mind. And you want to be alive to the fact that they could come up at any time. So don't let the breath get mechanical. Don't get, let the meditation become just a chore where you put in the time, punch in the clock. Say, okay, I did this much walking meditation, this much sitting meditation. It's the quality of your attention that's going to make all the difference. There's that book on 10,000 hours. Well, 10,000 hours of a mechanical practice is not going to make you an expert. Sometimes just one minute of really close attention can teach you a lot more than 10,000 hours of just putting in the time. So try to be sensitive to what you're doing. John Fu made the comment one time that all oh, the texts say that breath meditation is appropriate for everybody. He said it's not the case. It requires a certain amount of subtlety, a certain amount of sensitivity. And some people just don't bring that to the meditation. So you have the choice. The more sensitive you are to what's going on in the breath, the more sensitive you are to what's going on in the mind, the more you're going to see. Because it's not like something different is going to come and show you awakening. It's, awakening is found right here in the body, in the mind, at the breath, here at the present moment. The insights that are going to come will come from understanding what's going on right here, right now. So try to be sensitive. Try to be alert. And learn to ask a few questions that are outside of the box. Because that's how the Buddha saw it, new things. He asked different kinds of questions. People at his time were concerned about whether the world was eternal or not eternal, finite or infinite, questions about the soul, questions about other abstractions. Those are the big issues of the day. People would come to see him and they'd insist on knowing what his positions were, and they'd get upset when he wouldn't take a position. He had a different set of questions entirely. What when I do it will lead to my long-term welfare and happiness? What when I do it will lead to long-term harm? What's blameless? What's blameworthy? What's skillful? What's unskillful? What is suffering? What's causing it? Is there an end to suffering? How can it be found? These are the questions he asked. There were new questions, so he got new answers. So be sensitive to what you're doing and apply appropriate attention, in other words, the right questions, which may not be the questions you've been asking up to now. So think a little bit about the questions you're bringing to the practice, the expectations you're bringing. And see how you can fit things together so that things begin to open up inside. It's all happening right here, right now. It's just that you have to learn how to bring the right eyes to what's happening right now. That's when you'll see something new.